So what we're going to talk about is power over the years of OCP. And yes, I, I was involved. I was in, started working with Meta and OCP back when it started. Uh, and we started looking at power and what can we do to make it better? What can we do to make it more efficient? So that's what we've been doing. So we're just going to go through the different sections of what happened, what didn't happen, and where it's going. All right, so back in the day, and still today, a lot of power supplies go into servers as what we call front-end power supplies. There are two power supplies for every server. Rack power doesn't quite work that way. Rack power is a centralized power system. In the server, you have N plus N. In rack power OCP, it's talked about as N plus one. So the idea there is you don't need twice the power. You can use less than that and still have redundancy. So that's one of the things to look at and to think about when you're talking about rack power. That's one of the reasons they created OCP rack power, because it just made sense. If you had all these power supplies with AC cords in the back, it's very interesting. Somebody told me there's $1,000 worth of AC cords in the back of a typical rack with N plus N. You have two power cords to a OCP rack. Yeah, they're about the size of a, well, about that big around. But yes, there are fewer. Way back in the beginning, around 2011, 2012, the folks at Meta decided to develop rack power. They created an OCP rack, which is 21 inches wide, versus the typical 19-inch rack. They also put three bus bars down the back so they could deliver power. They put three shelves in it so that they could put power and have it accessible to the servers. So then you could put the power supplies in, then you put the servers in wherever you wanted them, and you got the power from the rack. So pretty simple. The concept was good, uh, it made sense, and then off and running. This is 2013. Had to get better. We had to figure out how to do more efficiency. So what we did and what they did is they said, okay, we're gonna put a single bus bar down the rack. I don't need all three. We're gonna put more power into a shelf, 3,300 watts, and the efficiency's going up to 96% peak. That's one of the things you'll see as I talk here, that efficiency keeps going up and up and up. So what that translates to is typically it's only 4% that that power shelf is dissipating. Now we all know or may know, not know, the server dissipates a lot of power. The power supply doesn't dissipate much but if we improve that little bit, it matters. So we've done that. That's what they did. Now also, in each one of those power shells, there's a rack level BBU. One to one, there's a BBU module to the power supply in the ORV2. Now in the back, it's got a solid bus bar. Okay, solid bus bar meaning there are holes in the bus bar in the rack and a nut and bolt that connect them together. So this is ORV2. ORV2 has been around for quite a while, and it was very good. It's got 12.5 volts out, because as you may know, servers run on 12 volts, so that's what they did. We have to do better. That was the next thing. So we sat down with the engineers at Meta and other people, and we said, okay, we're going to create the next generation, because that current, that's a lot of current, that 12 volts. It was so much. So what do we do? Well, guess what? We increase the voltage. Because if you increase the voltage for the same power, the current goes down. So when you went from 12 volts to 48 volts, the current went down by a fourth. So because of that, now the bus bar doesn't take as much current in it, okay? Even if you increase the current, if you doubled the power, you're only increasing the current by half of what you did before with 12 volts, right? So it made sense. So in ORV3, the bus bar is, I like to say, it's a 
like a PC board with metal on both sides. What's nice about that is you don't have holes and nuts and bolts. You can just slide in the server and put it in anywhere you want along the way. And then the other thing we did is we're going to create a six across power supply. Okay, there's six of them, three kilowatts each. So you got 18 kilowatts and you can slide this in wherever you like. Now, the big thing here was I reduced the current because I increased the voltage and I went to 54 volts, 48 volts, 51 volts. Why did I say that? Well, I went to 48 volts is what everybody said. As Google talked about earlier, they contributed a 48 volt system. But the reality is, it was a 54 volt system. Don't be confused. When somebody says 48 volts, it could be 54, it could be 51. Uh, the reason for that is, in the telecom world, they use lead acid batteries to back up. And you get 48 volts worth of lead acid batteries, you charge them up, it's 54 volts, right? So that's what they did. But ORV3, they didn't want to quite do that. They wanted to use the 48 volt system, but they said we're going to use 51 volts. Why? Well, the reality is in the DC to DC in the server, you can do a four to one DC to DC, and so it's a little bit more efficient and costs a little less. So that's why they did it. So it's still called 48, but it's actually 51. The other thing too is they created some AC inputs. What you have here is three phase AC in coming in, you divide that up internally to each one of the power supplies. Each power supply runs off a single phase. Nice thing about having six of them is that with three phase and two inputs, you balance the phases because all the output voltages are identical. All the output currents are the same. They share. That means the AC input current is the same. That means the neutral line has zero current. So that's one of the main approaches to this OCP. So that's ORV3. ORV3 was here until just recently when AI came along and AI says, oh, that's, let's see, that's 15 kilowatts plus one. That's not enough. I need AI. I need, I don't know, 30 kilowatts, 60 kilowatts. Oh, GB200 needs 120 kilowatts in a rack. So I need to do something new. I need to increase the power. And this is what we call ORV3 HPR. We went from three kilowatts per power supply to 5.5 kilowatts per power supply. So that shelf now has 33 kilowatts in it. It's the same type of configuration except the uh, uses what we call an HPR bus bar. It's a similar bus bar, it's just very de much deeper with more metal so it can handle the current. But it's pretty much the same thing. Now, the other thing is with a new system, a, a GB200 system, there are f at least four of these shelves in a rack. So you have 120 kilowatts. Also, the efficiency, now the peak efficiency you saw, remember before was 96 peak? Now it's 97 and a half. And it's, the efficiency is so much higher that they actually created a new term for that. There's a there's an organization called 80 plus that does this efficiency testing on power supplies and they created Ruby. Prior to this it was platinum. So now the other part of Ruby that is uh, interesting is the 5% point and the 100% point. It's above 90%. Previous to this Ruby, the spec down there was not that high. So now you got efficiencies very flat across the whole curve. So. What are we going to do next? Because 120 kilowatts is not enough. They're going to come out with the uh, GB200, the uh, Ultra. So you need 130 kilowatts. Well, I can do that. I can just put another shelf in there. It'll work. OK. What's next, though? Because they want 300 kilowatts in Iraq. So what are we going to do? Well, guess what we're going to do? You heard about Mount Diablo in the, in the uh, earlier discussions. So what they're going to do is they're going to take the power supplies and put them into a separate power rack. Now we're still at 50 volts, okay? We're going to put all the compute in one rack and all the power in one rack. And we're going to connect them with bus bars. 
And one thing I didn't say about the, that HPR, it, no, the HPR is using the HPR bus bar, but when you start getting into some of these higher, we're gonna go to solid bus bars again because I can get a little more current in them. So if we get 300 kilowatts or more in a rack, we're gonna have to put more and more and more shells. The other thing is we've got BBUs in there, so we got more and more and more. Now, I don't know if you know, but the GPU, they all turn on at the same time. So it's a lot of current. And it's for a very short duration, but it goes way high. So these power supplies are struggling to keep up. So what we can do, engineers figured this out, smarter ones than, than I am, said I can put some caps in there, what they call super caps or super batteries. They're just very high cycle batteries or Anyway, they act like a capacitor, they store a lot of energy, they have a lot of density. So when the GPU turns on, the energy can come out of those capacitors. If you don't do that, what happens is they pull the energy off the AC bus. The power company doesn't like that when you start messing with the AC bus. They frown on that. In fact, they will come get you if you do that. So we're not doing that. We're going to have to put some capacitor banks or large amount of capacitors in the power rack or maybe even in the compute rack. Now, then we're going to move on to plus or minus 400 out. You heard that last. Because again, the currents are so high that we cannot just stick where we are. We can't handle that. So by taking plus or minus 400 and running it from the power rack to the compute rack, it's a lot less current. The cables are now manageable. So that's what we're going to do. So real quickly, I don't have a lot of time, but what's going forward is going to change in the next three to five years, where it took us 12 years with just two or three. We're going to do the same thing. As I said before, in the compute rack, we got the HPR. We're going to put uh, a bunch of them. It's all 50 volts. Then we're going to go to a desegregated compute and power rack with 50 volts, with bus bars going between the two. In the power rack, there are spaces for those capacitors I was talking about. So the system will allow it to run without messing with the power from the power company. And then we're going to go to that plus minus 400. Okay, We're going to bring the 400 volts between the power rack and the compute rack. Now. Compute, the servers are all going to run on 50 volts. So if I have 400 volts, I have to put a 400 to 50 volt DC to DC converter in the compute rack. Now, this is what you're hearing now, you're hearing happening. But what is going to happen also is that you're going to hear from NVIDIA that they want 800 volts, not the plus or minus 400. Because the reality is they wanted 800 all along. But you couldn't do it. You, couldn't, you had problems getting uh, AC to 800 volts. There wasn't enough components out there to do it. So we're going to do the 400 for a little while. And then once we get enough components, we'll move to 800. The only difference is you bring 800 volts across, and then there's an 800 to 50 volt DC to DC in that compute rack. So all these things are happening all at once right now. So I'm a power guy. To me, this is all exciting. This is fun. A lot of you guys are just saying, hey, I need to compute. I need the AI. What the heck? <laughs> but it matters. It does matter. And then the other thing is our efficiencies keep going up and up and up, too. We're, we're going to struggle a little bit because all these currents are going up and up and up, too. So you do have voltage drops uh, in the bus bars. But we're doing the best we can. We're figuring it out. Uh, why we're going to plus or minus 400 or 800. Now we can, the cable's not as much, so the voltage drops do go down. Uh, the DC to DCs in the compute rack will be water-cooled uh, because you can. One thing I didn't mention is the AC to DC power supplies to date are not going to be water-cooled. Again, they're only dissipating 3 4%, so it's not that much. But if you put a megawatt into a power rack, it's 30 kilowatts you have to dissipate. So... You're not hearing anything today about liquid cooling, but I assure you, uh, 
my company, other companies are looking at it because we need to figure out a way to handle that as well. So that's power supplies. Uh, they're changing. They're changing very rapidly. To me, it's exciting. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll talk about this stuff all day, but I'm going to run out of time, so I'm done. Thank you very much.